Tell me how excited you are to, to have these guys be able to get out there, play against someone other than themselves. Well, I think, you know, we've had a uh, great fall. Uh, guys have worked off a hard. Uh, they banged on and beat up each other, so now we get to, uh, you know, go against someone else. Knock one down, Sasha. Oh, I'm really excited because I think I'm... I just want to see what level we are right now, you know, because we're doing, a, like... Good job on the practices. We worked so hard. Yeah, it's definitely exciting. You know, we've been working hard in preseason and um, practicing hard, and it's always good to, to play a game. Um, you know, that's what we work for, so it's finally here, and we're all excited. How's it going, everybody? New look Rainbow Warrior basketball team on the court tonight, taking on UH Hilo in their first exhibition game of the year. Right now, very early in the game, it is 8-7 Hawaii in the first half. UH playing with no seniors on the roster, replacing four starters from last season's squad. Tonight, though, Bows are without junior college All-American forward Roderick Flemings, who is at home in Dallas after the passing of his grandfather. Be sure to check back with us tonight for the result and highlights at 10. Now, following this game, UH has one more exhibition matchup against Chaminade on Friday before the season opener against San Francisco on November 14th. Four and five Warrior football team traveled to El Paso, Texas today following yesterday's disappointing 30 to 14 loss to Utah State, the first ever defeat to the Aggies in conference play. Utah State quarterback DeAndre Burrell gave the Hawaii defense fits, going 14 of 19 for 223 yards passing, two touchdowns, and added 87 yards on the ground. Offensively for Hawaii, just could not cash it in. Warriors had five shots in the red zone and came away with just one touchdown, turning it over twice and having Dan Kelly miss two field goals. Warriors, who are 3-3 three and three in the WAC, now need to win three of the remaining four games to clinch a spot in the Christmas Eve Hawaii Bowl. Um, I don't know. Any loss like, right now is kind of like, we don't like that taste in our mouth. So, you know, like, we thought about it. Like, everybody's been thinking about it a lot just because not to uh, talk, like, down talk uh, Utah State, but it's just nothing was turning out like we thought it was going to be. Uh, I mean, with that being said, like, we're thinking about it, like, 24-7. Do you kind of have that feeling like your backs are against the wall? Oh, yeah, most definitely. We're thinking, like, our backs are against the wall even uh, before, like, this past week. Because we, we don't want to lose at all, like, no matter what. But I just take it day by day so far. So pretty much we're, like, I, think, I think we're, like, under pressure just so we can get, like, so we can win out. So up next for the Warriors, they'll stay in El Paso for the week, preparing for another matchup with the Aggies, this time against New Mexico State on Saturday. Again, Warriors are 4-5 and five overall, 3-3 three and three in the WAC. Running back Kealoha Polaris is expected to be ready for kickoff after missing the last two games with a foot injury. Over in Denver, former Warrior Devon Best had just two catches for 28 yards, but this was a nice one sliding on his back. Let's get another peek at it. Miami is going to get the rarity. They pick up a win in Denver, 26-17. to 17. On the college ranks, there was a shakeup on the top five in the BCS. Alabama takes over the top spot, and Texas Tech makes the leap from seventh to second. Texas drops to fifth. In the bottom five, WAC member Boise State cracked the top ten at number ten overall. The UH football team has a very strict 48-hour rule. Win or lose, moving on is a must. And moving on is exactly what the Warriors did today on their way to New Mexico State. Basically, you know, the loss is a loss now, so we can't dwell on it now. It's a 48-hour thing. we got to get over and go get New Mexico State now. Staying on the road has never felt so long for the Warriors. Following a stunning 30-14 to loss to Utah State, the UH football team still has one week to go before they return to the islands. It's a difficult situation to be in, but I know we've, we've fought back from situations like this before. You know, one of them being San Jose. You know, after we lost in San Jose, it's kind of a similar feeling, you know. We have great leaders in Adam. Solomon, um, you know, seniors that, that have shown great leadership and, you know, they rallied everyone up. And sticking together is what Hawaii needs more than ever. The Warriors' lack of cohesion led to a laundry list of miscues. Nine UH penalties, five dropped passes, two blocked field goal attempts, and just one conversion in the Aggies' red zone allowed Utah State to get their first ever win against UH. Uh, we just got to stay poised, stay positive, just have patience, and uh, just Give it to New Mexico State, man. Try to make this bowl game. Like, Coach Max still got some goals in mind and stuff. The way we'll help heal is definitely getting ready to practice Monday and having a great week of practice. No letdown, high intensity. And um, the only way I think we can really heal from this is coming back home with a W. Painful defeat for the UH Warrior football team yesterday, suffering a 30-14 road loss against perennial WAC cellar dweller Utah State. 
It was about what could have been for Hawaii, who on four out of five trips into the red zone came away empty. Hawaii quarterback Greg Alexander got the start, going 13 for 27 for 186 yards and a touchdown. He also ran for a score while again sharing time with Inoke Funaki. But it was the missed opportunities that stung Hawaii, as well as the effort of Aggies QB DeAndre Burrell, who threw for 223 yards and two TDs while running for 87 yards. In the end, Utah State won their second game of the year, and Hawaii fell to under 500. How you doing, everybody? Let's talk sports. The loss puts added pressure on the Warriors' bull hopes. At 4-5 and five overall, UH now has to win three of its final four games to qualify for the Hawaii Bowl. A distinct possibility, yes, but this is still no doubt a low point in UH's season. You know, offensively, it just came down to, uh, you know, poor execution in the red zone. We had the ball in there three times, and came away with zero points, and twice we were inside the five. I mean, that's just... You gotta do better than that if you want to win football games. I mean, we knew coming in there were gonna be they're tough at home. You know, they gave Fresno all they could handle the week before, and so so I don't think we uh, underestimated them. They just outplayed us offensively. You know, we we outplayed them in between the twenties, but once we get in the red zone, you know, we we shot ourselves in the foot with penalties and turnovers. I mean, that's the difference in the ball game right there. Warriors will stay on the continent through next Saturday's game against New Mexico State. Hawaii is in El Paso, Texas as we speak, where they'll stay before heading to Las Cruces on game day. Kickoff between the Warriors and the 3-5 and five Aggies is scheduled for about 11 a.m. Hawaii time.